Hi everyone and thanks for joining me for another Cricut tutorial. Today we're going to be making these cute round makeup bags. These are really popular and really easy to make with the Cricut Maker. Now if you don't have a Cricut Maker, don't worry. You can use the Cricut Explorer to cut it out in cardstock and use that for your template. Or if you don't have either, you could use something as simple as a dinner plate. I'm gonna walk you through all of that in the video. So if you don't have a maker, stay tuned. You can still create this. Now I have created a design space file for you to use. It's in the video description below. One thing you need to know is that you need two pieces of fabric, 12 by 12, and another piece of fabric approximately 12 by 18. Now, if you are not using the maker, you're going to want to check out this video on, I have it linked in the description below the video, but it's on how to make your own bias tape. You do want to create bias tape that is cut on the bias for this project. The first thing we need to do is prepare our two pieces of 12 by 12 fabric. I'm going to start by applying an iron on vinyl by Heat and Bond on the inside fabric for my bag. That will make it easy to wipe out. This product is linked in the description below the video as well as everything else I'm going to be using. But this product comes in a roll just like this and I've just cut a piece that is 12 by 12 or approximately the same size as my fabric. We're also going to be using a woven interfacing. This is also by Heat and Bond. But to apply the vinyl, you want to figure out which piece is going to be the inside of your bag. And again, this is gonna make it easy to wipe out. If you do want to skip this step, you absolutely can. How this works is you cut it about the same size as your fabric, and then you just peel off the backing. That reveals kind of a tacky side. It's not really adhesive, but it's sort of tacky. You're going to put that tacky side down on the pretty side of your fabric. And this is going to create a waterproof I mean, it's not gonna be waterproof if you saturate it, but it's going to create a wipeable, water-resistant surface. So then you're going to take that backing paper that you just peeled off, and you're going to put it so the grid side is up, and using an iron with no steam on medium heat, you're just going to rub that over the vinyl application, and that's going to melt that vinyl into your fabric. Now make sure your vinyl does not touch the make sure your iron does not touch the raw vinyl it will melt it and put a hole in it and since this piece is cut exactly the same size i'm just going to kind of shift it around and move it to make sure that i get all of the edges sealed but you can see it's already becoming adhered to the fabric it doesn't take very long at all it's a really neat way to make your surfaces water resistant and wipeable so you can see after just a few seconds, I've got this vinyl adhered, adhered to my fabric. And it's really a neat trick to use for projects like this. Now to apply the second piece, it's going to be the outer part of our bag. We are going to put it pretty side down on our ironing surface. Make sure it's nice and ironed. And then we're going to apply this woven interfacing. This woven interfacing is more like a thin piece of fabric. It's not stiff at all. It's very pliable. It does have a rough side. That's the adhesive side, and that's the side we're going to put down on the wrong side of our fabric. Now, for this part, I like to use steam. Refer to your instructions or do what works for you, but I do use steam to apply this, and I like to keep the iron moving. If you tend to just let the iron set, it will leave a mark that's kind of hard to iron out, or at least it is for me. So I kind of like to not let it set too long, keep the iron moving, and then I flip it over and press it one more time just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. So and go ahead and cut that out with your Cricut. I use the cotton setting with more pressure for all three pieces of fabric. Now, if you don't have a maker, you can use something as simple as a plate. You're going to go ahead and prepare your fabric the exact same way. You're going to need two 12 inch pieces of fabric or something that's going to fit your round object and use, this is a dinner plate. I think it's like an 11 inch dinner plate or maybe 10 and a half. And you're just going to simply cut a circle out of each of your fabrics. And again, the vinyl is optional. If you don't want to use the vinyl, that's perfectly fine. If you do, just go ahead and cut two circles out of your fabrics. Okay, so now we have two circles, one with vinyl and one plain, and we have our strips of bias tape. 
you may have one long strip of 36 inch. If you cut it with the maker, you're going to make it. This vinyl fabric is going to be the bottom of the makeup bag. It's going to make it very nice to wipe it out. This piece is going to be the bottom of the bag and this bias tape is going to be the casing for the drawstrings. So the first thing we're going to do is work on our bias tape. And again, if you followed the video that I linked in the description and you're cutting it by hand, you're not going to follow this obviously. But for those of you who are using your maker, you're going to stack them up just like this and sew them together. Once you have a large and a small piece sewn together, right sides together, you're going to sew those together, right sides together. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance for all of the seams, unless I state otherwise. Once you have those two sewn together, you're going to sew the last one onto it so that you end up with one long strip and it doesn't matter what order you sew them together. So you should have about a 36 inch piece of bias tape when you're done. You're going to fold that in half, finger crease it, and then just cut that in half so that you end up with two 18 inch or approximately 18 inch strips of fabric. If it's a little bit smaller, don't worry about it. So you can see I've just finger creased it in half and I'm cutting it in half. I've also ironed my seams open so that they're nice and flat. So you should have two about 18 inch strips of fabric that look like this. You're going to take each one over to the ironing surface. You're going to fold it down about a quarter of an inch on the short side, fold it down another quarter of an inch and stitch that closed. So again, fold it down once, fold it twice and stitch that down. You're going to do that on all four of your short ends. Okay, you can see I have sewn mine, folded them, sewn them down so that you have no raw edges on the short ends. Now you're going to fold it in half. Now because this fabric is cut on the bias, it's going to stretch and move a little bit. You wanna to try to not stretch it out or distort it in any way. Just simply fold it in half delicately on the long side and press it. Once you have both of the strips folded in half long ways and pressed, you're going to arrange them around half of your circle and because it's cut on the bias it's going to do this really easy but you're going to put that folded in towards the center of the circle and your raw edges facing out lining it up with the edge of the bottom circle the circle that's going to be the inside of the bag and if you want you can fold your circle in half and mark it so that you know how far one strip should reach from start to finish if you have extra after you put them both on, you might wanna just fold down one of your short ends again. If it's just a little bit, you can fudge it a little bit just by gathering the fabric a little bit under your seam. This is going to be part of the drawstring, so it's not really going to show. But I'm just going to leave, I'm gonna put these just about butted up right next to each other and start the second one. Now again, because this is cut on the bias, it's going to stretch and bend. That's what's allowing us to bend this around the circle. That's a good thing, but try not to pull and tug on it because it will become longer and then you'll have excess, or excess fabric when you get to the end. So just continue to pin all the way around. I like using these wonder clips, especially for this project. It makes it really, really simple. And the other end should meet right up with the end that you started with. So it should look something like this. Now you want to take it over to the sewing machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to sew all the way around the circle backstitching at the beginning and the end. So just start at one end, go all the way around the circle, quarter inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you do that, it's going to look something like this. We're gonna leave those folds tucked on the inside and we're going to make a sandwich. We're going to put the pretty side of our other piece of fabric, pretty sides together, and we're going to clip this into place. 
And again, we're being careful not to stretch or distort the fabric at all. We're just clipping it up. It should meet exactly with the circle that's on the bottom. Your pretty sides are together. That casing that you just made is sandwiched in between. Push towards the center. And I do find with this project it helps to use more clips than less just because you're sewing on the round and it's on the vinyl so it's going to want to move a little bit. So what I like to do is just make sure I'm not where those two casings meet. Any, any place else is fine and I'm just going to mark about a three or four inch opening. That's where I'm going to turn it wrong side out or right side out. So we're not going to sew between those two lines but we're going to sew everything in between. So don't sew between the two lines. I'm not going to sew in there. But we're going to start back stitch, go all the way around, back stitch, and stop. Quarter inch seam allowance. So all the way around the edge, quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure everything is lined up. You can see I have sewn all the way around. Now if you don't have pinking shears, use your snips and just snip lightly into the fabric. Make sure you don't cut into your seam allowance or your stitching. I have pinking shears, so I'm going to use pinking shears, but we're just going to trim off a little bit around that edge and that's just going to allow the fabric to move a little bit since this is a round stitch. When we turn this right side out, you don't want that fabric to pucker. So that's just going to help prevent it a little bit. So you're going to open up that seam and turn this right side out. So it takes a little bit of work but that shouldn't be too difficult. Don't panic when you turn this right side out. You're going to see that your vinyl is a little bit crinkly. That's not a problem. We're going to fix that. So I'm just using a bone folder. You can use a chopstick, whatever you have, and I'm just taking it along those seams on the inside, just making sure everything is pushed out and nice and round. And now I'm going to use that piece of backing paper that we peeled off the vinyl originally. I'm going to place that right on top and I'm just going to take this over to the iron and press it and that vinyl will smooth it back out. So you can see it looks just like new. Now we need to address this opening on the bottom. You're going to tuck your raw edges in. It's going to sort of do it naturally but because of that vinyl and the interfacing it's going to fight you a little bit. So I just find it just take your time try to keep your corners nice and round and what I did was stitch this closed. Now if you want we're going to do a top stitch at the at a later time but I went ahead and stitched this closed because of the vinyl and the interfacing it's a little bit stiff and I didn't want to risk sewing my top stitch and then missing it so I just very lightly on the edge as close to the edge as I could get I just stitched that close and you're never going to see it nobody's going to notice that but if you wanted to hand stitch it you could also do that I was trying to keep this simple. And now I take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch right along this top edge. I'm just getting close to the edge and trying to stay consistent. You can see here how I placed it under the sewing machine. I am using a Teflon foot that helps it glide over that vinyl a little bit. But that step is absolutely optional. Now I'm going to use the purple thing. If you don't have one of these, you don't really need one. You can use a safety pin. You can use a bobkin, whatever you want to use. I happen to get one in a gift. So I'm just threading my string, my drawstring through here. By the way, my drawstrings, I have two strings cut to 48 inches each. And I'm just threading it through one side or one half and out the other side of the half. And then we're going to thread it right back through the second half. This purple thing is, it's, it's a purple thing. I'm not saying that uh, with a twang. That's what it's called, purple thang, T-H-A-N-G. And I've got it linked below the video. It is pretty handy and pretty nifty to have. And it makes it a lot faster than threading with a safety pin, but safety pin works absolutely fine too so don't feel like you have to have a purple thing 
I just like saying it. All right, so now you're going to tie these two strings together. And there's a there's room, there's extra um, ribbon on here. That's totally up to you. If you would like to have a bigger lip on the bag, you can absolutely do that. Just make your two, I, I made the bias strips two and a half inches. You could make them three and a half. That would give you another inch. But that's totally up to you. I didn't want them to be super long. So now we're just going to re-thread our second string through our bag and we're going to do the exact same thing except we're going to enter on the opposite side. And we're going to come out where the other strings are. And go back in. If you're up on top of the, uh, the strings on the first half, stay on top on the second half or vice versa. If you're on the bottom, stay on the bottom so that they're nice and neat. And you're just gonna pull that all the way through. Make sure when you're tying these off that you have the bag fully flattened so that you know you've left enough material or enough string that it can go all the way flat. And then I'm just going to snip off the ends so that they're even. And that's it. You've just made your flat makeup bag. These are really fun and cute. I think they're going to make great little Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or girly gifts, whatever. Um, again, you don't have to put the vinyl in. I've seen people make these um, much larger and store Legos in them and things like that. So they can be used for all kinds of practical purposes. But these will fit the Explorer. Here's one I made without the vinyl. And again, I'd probably not use this one for makeup, maybe to take jewelry, bracelets, bangles, something like that when I'm traveling, just because I wouldn't want the makeup to get on the fabric and have to keep washing it. But these are a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to pick up the design space file down in the description below the video. If you make these, I would love it if you tag me on social media. It makes me so happy when I see you guys create something that I showed you how to do. And till next time, I'll see you guys soon. Never stop making. Bye-bye.